Hey guys, Simon here and welcome to my Minecraft design school. So today we have um, Folk Palais? Folks Palais? I don't know how to pronounce that. This is the People's Palace. I don't even know what language that is, but that's the People's Palace. So uh, let's load that up and I'll read you the, the message that was sent to me by Adrian. He says, Dear Simon, I am Adrian from the Netherlands. I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name. Adrian? Adrian? I play a lot of Minecraft and I like to build quite massive structures, so that's the scale. The problem is that I don't know how to fill the empty spaces and the empty walls. Right. Right now I am working on a model of the People's Palace from the Sword of Truth series, a book series by Terry Goodkind. The design is based on the books but also on the palace of the people in Romania. The idea behind my design is that it is a city or large community in one castle. So it's a city in a castle, right? Okay. So with apartments, shops, and other public places in one castle, the time setting is half Roman and half Middle Ages. All right, so early medieval kind of setting. <laughs> There's a lot of glass for early medieval. They, they weren't that rich back then, they couldn't afford the glass, but oh, that's okay. okay. The glass dome, they would not afford a glass dome. But you know, it's fiction, never mind. So glass dome, that's cool, they're rich. Um, I'm done with the outer walls, I've made rooms inside and I've filled some rooms, but there are still a lot of empty rooms. My questions are, what are good ways to fill up the empty spaces, how do you make the outside less boring, and your overall opinion of the building? And he says he's not a native English speaker. And no, your, your English is pretty good. At least your written English is quite good. So let's see. Um, you should pause the video and look up what he said. Uh, type in palace, palace of the people in... Romania. So type that into Google image search because I've got that open right now. Actually I'm going to uh, tab out of this a little bit and I'm going to look up People's Palace um, Sword of Truth to see if there's anything on Google for that. Let me just um, excuse me while I tab out. Ah, I see. So I've got that open in Google Im Image Search as well, and that's interesting. Well, first of all, the People's Palace in the Sword of Truth is actually on a hill. It's on a mountain, so it's uh, slightly more impressive than what we have here in Flat Creative. But it's actually quite different from the Palace of the People in Romania, which is a square building. So, like the Let's see, the that has kind of these gothic spires and 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 you know pointy roofs and things, whereas this is quite clearly more classical. Like it's all it's very rectangular and square. So it's actually quite two. It's actually two quite different buildings. And here, what he's done is he's taken the the square elevation, but then he's taken the circular plan. So the square elevation of the, the real building, the Palace of the People in Romania, and then the circular plan of the castle from the book. So he's kind of combined the two, and you see the circular plan, that's pretty cool. A series of circles. Looks pretty awesome from there. Let's just uh, walk around a little bit. I can address his concerns right away, but I want to... Just check the inside. Let's just start with. So he asked two things. He asked, "What are how to fill the rooms, and how do you make the outside less boring?" People's Palace by Adrian K. Yeah, there we go. That's his name. Well, if it's a city, you know the the thing is, Sim City is a great thing to to consider. I don't know how many of you have played Sim City. 
but uh, as a simulation of a city and as a thing to kind of learn about how cities are designed or how they function, it's actually quite useful. So in that game, like you have residential districts, you have in I think that's market with a T instead of a D. I don't know, maybe it is marked. So there's uh, there's residential, there's commercial, and there's industrial, and then there's government buildings, there's schools, there's um, hospitals, uh, police stations, fire stations, parks and roads. I think that's pretty much sums up you know the basic elements of a city. Oh and the government building as well so if it's a democracy then maybe like a, a, a parliament or a congress sort of a building or if it's a smaller city then it's just gonna be the the governor or the mayor or whatever you want to call him. I'm not supposed to be here. A lot of these spaces you can't actually get to. Look at that. There's like glass panes there and then there's no doors out here. So I see what's going on with with Adrian. Like he's he's made a like he started. He's got an interesting plan, and he's extruded these shapes up. So and then you draw circles on the ground, and then you pull them up, and you get these cylinders, and you add a dome at the top. It's a uh, it's one way to design, of course. But what do you what do you end up with is the elevation is not very interesting because you started off with circles on the ground and you pull it up and so the circles look interesting but then when you look at it from the ground straight at it you just get a whole lot of rectangles or you know just kind of really flat shapes I can't even find my way back in also he hasn't really considered how this thing functions as a, as a city and I guess he, he says that in the message like you know how do I I think like it, he he asked, well, how what should I put in the rooms? But I think the bigger question is, how does this building function as a city? Which I don't th think he has considered. So there's a main hall here. Um, what are these spaces? And there's a whole lot of rooms I see. So we're gonna have to talk about urban design, and unfortunately kind of difficult to talk about urban design without you know showing you maps of real cities and whatnot. I'll try and you know deal with the concepts when I get back outside. I'm just gonna check these rooms up. What is that? Theatre? That's cool. Yeah, theatre. Cultural buildings. Except where is the theatre? Is it here? And again, like he started from shapes, and then he's built a lot of corridors and rooms out of the shapes, and then now he's trying to decide how to fill in these shapes. That might actually be the wrong way to go about architecture, although you know there's, you know, there's not necessarily a right way and a wrong way, but it might be a difficult way to go about arch architecture. Let's say that because you've already got rooms, and you're trying to figure out what to put in them rather than first figuring out what you need to have in your building and then designing the rooms around that. It's uh you know architecture can be done both ways. A lot of times, you know, you uh, if you're designing a house, for example, then you know you need a house, you know you need a lounge, a kitchen, a dining room, bedrooms, toilets. And then you design the house knowing what you need. On the other hand, a lot of office buildings is made so that you don't know who's gonna be renting those offices. You're just gonna design a building with a lot of office space, just kind of generic office space, and then people move in and then put their office in there. But then when you design it, you don't know who it is. It could be an architect's office, it could be a lawyer's office, it could be an accountant's office, and so then you know, they end up with pretty much the same sort of space regardless of who they are and they just try to fit themselves in as, as the best they can. So there's you know there's two ways to, to go about designing things. Either this the function first or the space first. But if you do the space first then what you really want to do is to 
make the spaces as simple and flexible as possible. And the problem with what our friend Adrian has done here is that he's made a lot of circles. <laughs> and circles are very difficult to design into usable spaces. Like rectangular rooms are, are easy, circles are a little bit more complicated just because you know you have curves to deal with. And you've got all these rooms and there's no clear circulation, like there's no clear hallways or paths or anything like that, like there's no main road and side roads. So this so I can see that it'll probably be the most helpful if I talk a little bit about urban design principles. And then the other half of course is what he asked about and how to make the walls more interesting. That's probably the easier one. I'll start with the more complicated thing. So he's got a roof garden here as well, so that's, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. Um, Alright, I don't think I've actually been to all the rooms, but I've managed to get myself lost a few times already, so I won't try to figure this out too much. This is interesting. Is that meant to be a beacon? It's not shining though. So yeah, a lot of very interesting shapes and interesting spaces, but I can understand why he has difficulty trying to figure out what to build in them because they're, you know, they could, because he wasn't, he didn't start off with those questions. He just made the spaces first. Whereas if you have in mind what you need first and then you make the spaces, then it's kind of usually easier afterwards. All right, so basic urban design principles. What is a city? You know, a city is where people live, where they work, people do stuff. So you have residential, commercial, and industrial. So some way for people to live for their homes and houses and apartment buildings. And then you have shops, markets, you know, where people can trade, commerce is important, and an industry where you can produce things, manufacturing. And uh, I guess agriculture is this kind of industrial as well. So where you grow food, you know, where you manufacture things, you know, how, where do you make tables and chairs, where do you, like factories, workshops, and stuff like that. So we have that, and then we have government, services, which includes schools, hospitals, fire, police. So, you know, sometimes these are commercialized, but often the, the government has to provide these things. Uh, what else do we have? Kind of parks, uh, cultural buildings, like, you know, libraries, theaters, things like that. Uh, what else? Um, think, think, think. What else? Ports, sta train stations, bus stations, transport, and uh, roads. Um, am I missing something? If I'm missing something, uh, I guess I'll try to remember if I figure it out later. Or if you can think of anything, then you can tell me. Alright, so the structure. Often you will have, let me just kind of try to draw a map, if I can. Often you have, in the middle, town square, main, well maybe it could be commerce or government. Like if you have a town, I'm just going to lay this out. Usually town square, commerce, and or government. And then, further out, oops, further out you might have more commerce. I'm just kind of drawing this, like it doesn't have to be centralized like this, I'm just, this is just a diagram. You don't have to make yours this shape. But the, the placement of things is actually um, important too. 
like, actually, yeah, this is a. Uh, yeah, just keep building this. You want things to be centralized on the most important things because that's actually more efficient. Like, if there are some things that everybody goes to, then putting that in the middle means you minimize the distance of roads. So, you might have more commerce out here. More commerce. Commerce. And more commerce. Oops. And then, what you might have is residential areas. And you might have multiple residential areas. So let's say this is residential. And uh, maybe this is residential. Again, it doesn't quite have to be this shape, but the relationship between the parts is more important than the specific shape. And uh, I think I'll get to that soon. And then maybe we have industrial here. Oops, what I meant to do is that. Maybe you have industrial here. Oh, cultural. Cultural should be in the middle as well. Um, so industrial might be there, and then ports might be past the industrial, but we might get like a a path from the other things as well. So. Um, Transport. So, I mean, in your castle, this would be like a front gate, I guess. That's your transport. Um, I guess you don't really have to go straight to residential. You can go through commercial and into residential. Maybe I'll just get rid of that. Maybe that's not quite right. Kind of. Um, what else do we have? So, this, can we edit this or not? No, I can't. I'm just going to place a new one. Town square. Town square. Government. Cultural. I mean, this is assuming that your government is the most important part of your city and your society and, and, and your society values cultural things. Like, you know, your, your society values education and museums and theatres and things like that. You know, some so societies value commerce more. You know, in some cities, the commercial district will be in the middle, and or maybe in some cities, the commercial and the cultural are, are mixed together in the city center. So it depends on on your society. So why why do we why would we arrange it in something like this? Well, first of all, you put the commerce needs to be in the middle because commerce is people coming together to do business and trade, and 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 commerce benefits from a lot of people being in the same space. I mean, imagine if you have a shop and you're selling things, and you're selling bread, for example. If you live out in the middle of nowhere by yourself and you try to sell bread, you're not going to sell any bread because there's no one there. Whereas if you're in the middle of a city and you try to sell bread, then you're likely to get a lot of customers because a lot of people walk past your shop and they smell the bread and they get hungry and they buy the bread, right? So the more people there are around your shop, the more successful your shop is likely to be. And that's why the commerce is usually in the middle of the town where everyone comes together and everything's more concentrated. So the commerce is in the middle and uh, I guess the, the government and cultural stuff are in the middle. Cultural stuff is important in that way as well. But like if you are, you know, cultural is, is not just you watching a movie, it's more an exchange of ideas. 
so you know more people coming together to hang out to talk and discuss and learn I mean a university it's not just a you know, just not just classrooms it's the fact that a lot of people come together to you know discuss ideas and and, and talk with each other and, and study together so cultural things also benefit from this um, you know concentration and so these things are usually in the middle of the city um, industrial the problem with industrial is that it generates pollution in the past industrial industrial um, uses also benefited from you know a concentration of people like when 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 industry was labor intensive or in some countries industries are still labor intensive you know they benefit from having a lot of people to work but now with factories and machines and trucks you know usually industry is pushed to the edge of the city where the pollution they generate don't affect the rest of the city right and because of the advances in transport they just truck things around all the time so you don't need things to be close to where they consume so this can be actually further out but uh, it's more efficient if oh and this transport is like airports shipping ports so you know you want the ports to be relatively close to the industry so that whatever they manufacture you can ship out and sell and at the same time you want this to be linked to the commerce as well so whatever you produce in your factories you can take to your shops and sell them right so that's the relationship between industry and commerce and you want the industry to be far away from the residential areas because you don't want the pollution you don't want to smell the factories you don't want the, the smog and the soot and the pollution and so the residential areas are often further away from the industry and on the edge of the, the commerce and cultural areas because you know that's where you go to be quiet that you go home to sleep and to be quiet and so you don't want to be close to you know there's, there's no point being as close to the commerce stuff and so this is like a, a basic town and then more like so that the actual arrangement is not as important as the relationship between the different parts of the town now, did I miss anything out? I don't think so, I think I got pretty much all of that so you know it doesn't have to be this layout but when you're thinking about the city you need to have that layout in mind or have you have some sort of layout in mind and you have the relationship between the parts in mind so now this is like the main door so once you come in here what I would expect to find so he's put the market I, I think this is market not market if this is the market then that's great because what happens is this is the front gate to the castle so if you were a traveling trader for example like if you are bringing goods in from a distant country and you're gonna sell it in this in this castle then you just kinda walk in the door and you can go to the market and you sell things on the other hand people living in this castle I don't know where the residential areas are they'll come to the market and they'll sell things so this is where the market things should take place this is the commerce near the front gate in the middle of the town I would expect to find the government and the cultural things and then to the side I don't know where you would put the the manufacturing like I don't really know the plan of this place as well as uh, Adrian does so you know I'm afraid I can't really give any detailed advice as the way to put things so I mean what's the relationship like, how far from the entrance is this this could still be a cultural thing or this could be a market but the fact that you know you, there's no way to get from so the front door was up there right and so the front gate goes into there but then there's this circular place comes down here to nothing the circulation is a little bit convoluted and again I, I don't know enough like I still haven't figured out the circulation in my mind but what I think needs to happen here is maybe you need to rearrange the circulation so that you know you can it's more obvious where you're meant to go so this oh I see like this is not I mean this this is good but the fact that you have to come to the side through these really small doors 
to get to this area is and then you don't know where this is, this is like a long hallway of nothing but then if you follow this strange hallway then there's a, a, a major space here as well so the spatial hierarchy is is problematic okay let's, let's go back outside and talk about spatial hierarchy and, and really spatial hierarchy is determined by size the sizes of things, the sizes of doorways, the width of hallways and by making things bigger and smaller you are communicating to people that something is more or less important so let's say for example if I hmm, I should use a different... no I just use white oh cow so imagine I have I have a wall one, two, four, five. Okay, let's just build a wall. So we're going to talk about spatial hierarchy. Alright, so we have a, sp a wall. Let's say I make an opening, and then I make another opening, and then I make another opening. So if I do that, and I ask you which one is more important? The big one, obviously, the big one, and also the one in the middle. So which is the main door? Which is the side door? obvious right obvious this is the main door that's the side door and then if you do this as well and I say okay what's the main door which one is which one is more important obviously the one in the middle is more important so that that's spatial hierarchy now if I change this a little bit let's say if I put a side door there I shouldn't say that let's say I do this and I do this and I say, okay, what's the which one's the main door and which one's the which ones are the side doors? That one is the main door. And these are the side doors. Even though this is to the side, and that's in the middle, because that's bigger, that's still the main door. Right? So so spatial hierarchy. And uh if we you know, convert these into, let's say, a, a hallway. Um, this might take a while. But just the sizes of things and, uh, and the relative placements of them, like, you, you use that to communicate to people what's important and what's not important. So uh, let's say we have a corridor here. So we have a corridor. This is a fairly big corridor. And then in the middle of it, you know, we might have a doorway. and then a doorway, and then a doorway. So if you look at that, that's a big corridor. And if you look at that, you would think, okay, so there's no real difference between these three exits. And then if, if the corridor is big again like that, but uh, let's say these are, are smaller hallways, either side uh, did I do this right? so you come up to a, a situation like this but you can't tell which path is the most important? Although, you know, this is lower and that's, ho that's higher, so... You know, if you want the main path to be more important, then you really need to... 
kind of make it clear. So that now, it's pretty clear that these are side doors, and this is the main path. So by, by adjusting the size of things and, and where they're placed, you can show the player what's important and what's not. And so when a person, and including me, when I walked in, I assumed that these are completely unimportant. And this is the main path. This is where you want me to go. And then this is about as big as that, although this is bigger, but that's quite big. And so I assume that this is somewhat important. That's still the most important, but this is also somewhat important. But then when I come up here, I've, I, you know, you have a big space in the middle, so that's actually really important. And then this balcony area is actually not important. So now I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm confused, like because I walked up the important path to get to the place that's not important and then I see that there's actually a, a more important space down here but how do I how do I get to that space and I actually walked around quite a bit and had never managed to figure it out but the the answer to that is in fact to get to the the central place which you would just as you would assume is quite important you have to go into a side area and again like this leads into a more important space than these, I think. I'm not sure. But they look the same from out here, so this is kind of like nothing. As far as I can tell. What is this? It's like the... So this is not useful. Not... I mean, it's, it's like the castle walls. Okay, that that's okay. But, you know, this leads to a different place from this, because this takes me to... Uh, this area, and then I come back from the side to the middle and then this is the important space. So you see, like we go to a side area that looks like it's not important and then we go around a few corners that's kind of confusing and then we get to the main space. So the circulation is is really confused because you know, you can't just look at the, the doors and say, okay, which is the biggest door? That's where I should go. But if you go there, you can't actually get to the biggest space. The biggest door doesn't lead to the biggest space. The smallest door ends up leading to the biggest space, and the biggest the biggest door leads to a small space. So, it's, it, I, I don't know if that's clear enough, or if I'm kind of a bit confusing, but the, the way the paths are arranged, and it happens throughout the entire facility, like you go through a small staircase and up to a big room and all that, so it, it's a little bit odd in that way. And really, you want to keep things consistent, so just consider as a person, you know, walking in, the grand hallway should lead to the grand room where the important things take place. And then the side doors that are smaller should take you to less important spaces. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to say that. Maybe, maybe that's enough, okay. And also, the, so, you know, what are the main spaces? in this castle. There's the, the hall in the middle, I think that's important. I think the garden is important too. If that's the only garden in the whole building, then the garden I would say is important. Is this important? The tower? Is this important in here? And is this important in here? They look important. Is that important in there? In the middle of that circle? So whatever the, the important things are in your facility, link them with the big hallways and make it clear how to get to them. So the, the the main roads should be put in between the important things first. So how, actually, how do you get up to this space? If this is meant to be like a, a secret chamber, then, then obviously you don't put an obvious door to it. But if this is meant to be a major gathering point where you want a lot of people to come here, then you really need the road leading up to this place to be quite obvious. You know, this is like a, a side staircase. It's a blind staircase too, like when you walk up the staircase, you don't know what you're walking into. And to get to it, you come through kind of smaller doors. You have to come through these side areas. So, you know, there's, there's no way anyone can find their way up here unless they, they know where they're going already. So. Is this like a dining room? I think it is. 
so you know it's just really difficult to find your way to the things that are actually important and that's not what you want to do like you want people to get to the important things fairly easily what is this how do I get down to the ground okay this way um, where am I going and it turns back around I see like the winding staircase is also you know not a good way to direct people to where they want to go as well because they kinda they can't see where they're going usually whoa lag I guess the rain is not helping sorry about that so like this when you walk up and down these stairs you can't see where you're going I remember the last time I was here did I go up the last time or did I not like it would be better if the staircase just went straight up in the spiral it just kept going straight forward because you know you don't expect to have to double back usually I, but then I guess there's nowhere else you can go here anyway but it's just that you know if you have if a grand staircase going straight in into the main area then then it makes more sense like to get to the very top you come straight in the main hallway into this side kind of area into a small door and then up a convoluted staircase so okay I won't I won't keep going on about this but I hope it's clear enough at this point you know what the problem is with the circulation in, in the sense that when you walk in you, you don't know where you're meant to go because the obvious paths take you to to the smaller areas whereas the the smaller paths lead you to where you actually want to go so that's not clear in that sense alright so relatively quickly the other the second question is how to make the outside less boring well that's all in details as I said earlier you should go into Google image search and look at palace of the people in Romania and just and and nearly you don't just look at the, the general shape of the building but look at the details look at the details so what's going on here uh, let me just grab sandstone probably chiseled smooth let me just show you on one bit on that bit there actually it's kind of dark can I make it daytime what time is it I don't know um so if you look carefully at the picture like there's horizontal lines at each level and there's a horizontal line at the top of the building and a horizontal line near the ground so let's just copy that like we just just copy it like the windows are there the vertical lines are there let's just put like a horizontal line around there I'm not gonna do the whole thing, I'm just gonna do like one side of it I guess and I'm not gonna do it properly neither so my apologies if this is a little bit ugly and rushed oops so oops that's obviously missing so imagine if we have a horizontal line at the top and then consider how the building meets the ground as well and then so imagine if we have a horizontal line at the ground right and then we can put even more horizontal lines on each level but maybe we don't want it to be quite as big as the other lines let's see if we can use a different material um, stone bricks let's see how that looks so then uh, where's the floor is that the floor I think that's the floor so imagine if we use a different material oh man they're doing construction work I hope that's not too loud in the in the video so imagine if we put a horizontal line where the floor is 
and uh, one here where the, oops my bad and one where that floor is you don't have to use stone bricks you can use other materials but just a different material with a different color so you can see it you know from a distance so uh, if we do that let's see how that looks now see just by lining see that's already more interesting so you don't have the flat yellow nothing sort of appearance to it so it actually looks like basically you're just drawing outlines you know and then just lining out where the the parts of the buildings are and imagine there's lines out there as well what you want to do or what you want to avoid is don't make it too complicated like you can imagine if you kind of start putting red and green and then blue woo everywhere and then all sorts of spotty and polka dots and then stripes and diamonds then this is going to be a complete mess right so don't have it too plain but at the same time just put in a few more lines to break it up so, so that you don't have a giant wall so that you have you know smaller elements to give it a bit more you know details more detailing and um Hmm, I think I should end the video soon. I don't want this to be too long, but let me just type this into Google and see what you come up with. This might be useful. It's um, architectural detailing. Let me just type that into Google and see what we find. Excuse me. Okay, that's actually not what I was looking for. You end up with a lot of plans and sections and detailed diagrams. It's actually quite technical. Might be interesting if you're into technical drawing. Let's try something else. Architectural ornamentation. I think I spelled that wrong. Orna on ornamentation. I I think I spelled that wrong. Let me try that. Architectural ornamentation. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's still a little bit technical. But just look at the detailing on the buildings. Like, I mean, uh, Adrian says. How do you make the outside less boring? And your overall opinion, well, yeah, basically how to make the outside less boring is just to put in some detailing. And you can use all sorts of different blocks. I mean, you have all these blocks to play with. And stairs are often, uh, stairs and these kind of walls, these are often things people are gonna use because you can get, you know, sub block sizes. Oops, I put a hole in the wall. You know, you can do that and put a, oops, I put a hole in the wall. Or I guess you can, you know, put in those. So these are smaller shapes that you can fill in, which are not just kind of giant blocks like these. And just, yeah, just kind of draw lines on your buildings. That's probably the, the easiest way to start. And then once you get used to doing that, then you might want to move on to other things. So like here, how do I make that more interesting? Well, you know, you outline the door with a different material. That's one way of doing it. And then, oops, sorry. <laughs> so you outline the door with a different material. And then down here you can have Where's the stairs? Here we go. There's the stairs. Okay, that's not that good. I think the, the top of these need to be outlined a little bit as well. Maybe we can do 
you know, things like that. This is bad. I'm sorry. This is just bad. So that's not very good. But just by using different materials and different shapes and just lining out the tops and the bottoms and, and I guess the floors. So these are kind of just little tricks you can do to make things look a little bit more interesting. And you've done a little bit of that here. You see how you've done this. So you've kind of extended out the window one block and then you've added these these lines and things along here and then you've added instead of having that just a completely flat piece of glass you put in these bits in the middle so you know you've done it here in this bit but uh, you've, you've relied on glass a lot you can use other materials other than glass and sandstone as well and you've done it there so you kind of put a circle and you put these columns in so you've done a little bit of that already and you know just just experiment with more different ways of doing that on the rest of the walls and uh, hopefully that answers your questions. The the urban design thing is probably the one that's kind of more difficult to get your head around. I wonder if there's anything good you can just read on the internet. Just try looking up urban design on, on Wikipedia or something. It's something that most people usually don't think about or they, they don't learn unless they are actually studying architecture or urban design but and you know when you when you walk through your city or you drive through your city you don't really think about it but I guess if you play SimCity you'll think about it but uh, it's one of those things where you have to kind of read about it and learn about it and then once you do then the cities start to make sense and then you can design your own cities to make sense and function well but it is something you have to learn. Like it's not something that you come across in your in your day-to-day -day life. All right, I'll end that there. That's uh, our Minecraft design school for today. I hope that's good. If you have any questions or any comments, feel free to 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 you know write them in the comments, and I'll try to address them. All right, that's it for today. This is SCK Chui's Minecraft design school. You send me your questions and your save file or your server IP address and I will give you architecture design advice and feedback. See the video description for more details. Seriously, you should read the description before you send me anything. Thank you.